Welcome to Type Aware. I am Nazir. I apologize as in previous class my mouse cursor was not visible while recording. Today we will go on a new journey of discovery. The topic at hand is direct selection, a powerful tool in our arsenal. In our previous class, we delved into the intricacies of the selection tool and explored the world of shapes. Today, we take a step forward and delve deeper into the world of direct selection. I have prepared a file for us, containing a smattering of shapes, as you may have seen in our last class. This file is a testament to the power of the direct selection tool, represented by the white arrow. To create a line segment click on the hold click on the ellipse icon then select line segment tool. Now click and drag by holding shift will make line straight. To remove stroke from the line click on box like icon at the bottom of toolbar. If a line doesn't have a stroke it's called path. Let's see when we hover over a small text appear above mouse says path. Illustrator is a world of precision and accuracy, and the smart guides feature is an invaluable tool in this endeavor. Always ensure that this feature is enabled, as it guides us in our movements and informs us of the location of our cursor. In conclusion, the direct selection tool allows us to select and move individual anchor points, giving us unparalleled control over the shape of our paths. The anchor point, like its namesake, keeps our path fixed in place, much like an anchor in the sea or an anchor person on TV. The possibilities are endless with direct selection, and we have only scratched the surface of its potential. Let us continue to explore and discover the wonders of this powerful tool. The delicate line was too faint, so I carefully added a black stroke to enhance its definition. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a stroke color option which will give the stroke its hue. Now, the entire path is visible. The purpose of direct selection is to individually select points and alter their positions, as demonstrated by the changes in the path's direction. Similarly, if you zoom in on any shape, you'll notice an anchor point, where if you select the whole shape, a small circle will appear alongside the anchor point. This circle can be used around any corner, by dragging it inside. However, if only one point is selected and dragged, only one corner will be rounded. Anchor points are like the joints in our body, without which we wouldn't be able to bend or move. By moving anchor points, we can completely change the shape of an object. The advantage of this is that we can create many interesting designs. For example, if we take a square and make a copy of it with Alt and Shift, we can use the Smart Guide to guide and snap the copy to the original. By making multiple copies, we can create an interesting pattern. Observe as a fascinating creation unfolds before your eyes. With delicate precision, I manipulate the shapes before me, molding them into a cohesive form. Utilizing the direct selection tool, I am able to seamlessly move the entire path with ease. By selecting specific points and dragging them, I am able to transform the shapes into a beautiful box. This box may appear to be a simple geometric shape, but it holds a complexity within its creation. And though we may be tempted to add color to our creation, I urge you to first master the art of constructing shapes and drawings. Only then will we be able to truly bring them to life with hues and tones that truly capture the essence of our creation. Right? For direct selection to move or copy you should select all points. We will make copy using holding alt key. Select four points from the bottom and we'll resize it. Make it a little bigger so it can work as cap for the box. Now if you see lines below the box head these are because no fill is applied. Head over to the small points slightly above the stroke and fill. Click on it and you are done. Select the box and make a copy of it using Alt key. Now if we adjust the size of the box using bounding keys. Their perspective gets disturbed and we should never ever do that to resize while maintaining its original shape. Using direct selection tool click four points below and using shift key will help you adjusting in straight line. If I want to use it as a single object or make a single group, then select all these. We are presented with a couple of options. To access the group function, one can go to the object menu or press the shortcut control plus G. Additionally, it can also be accessed by right-clicking and selecting group. Now, let us take a step forward. 
I have created a circle and a square. The box is not needed for now, so I have kept it aside. Let me rotate the shapes a bit. A tiny question for you all. What is the commonality between these two shapes? The answer is that both contain a center point and four anchor points. However, even though the shapes are similar, they are different because the circle has curves while the square does not. These curves, also known as handles or tangents, serve to morph the shape of the object. If you click on the bounding boxes of circle, you will see small lines, they are called handles. If we use direct selection tool and try to move it, its curvature changes. To add similar handles to a square box, you can use Anchor Point Tool under Pen Tools, click and hold Pen Tool, you will then see an Anchor Point Tool below. To remove curves from an object, simply click on the Anchor Point with the curves. Let us create an object with the Pen Tool. Inside the Pen Tool, we have seen the Anchor Point Tool. If I want to minus or delete some Anchor Point, I'll simply go to that point with my cursor and notice the small black star, asterisk, with the pen. If I go to the anchor point, it will show a minus sign. So if I click it, it will simply become a triangle. C path will remain closed. Shape is 2, but one anchor point got lessened, hence it became a triangle. Now, if I click on some existing path, it will add anchor points. But please remember, don't just start adding here and there or else the pen tool will start drawing. We'll discuss this more when the topic of pen tool comes. If I add an anchor point, what's the benefit we get? Oh yes, one more thing. When adding on paths, make sure the plus sign appears on your pen tool. And if I want to add on the center, my smart guide will help me once again. See I'm going through the center and a purplish guide is visible here. If I go up here, easily we get a notion that the center point is here. So I click here, and with direct selection, I pull this point upwards. Let's zoom out and move it a bit below. And if I take the anchor point tool and click and drag, see this? It became a very interesting arch. Now let's make some more things. For example, an egg shape. Of course, an egg is not like this, but if we change it a little bit, it will surely look like an egg. Once again, I take direct selection, as I made an oval shape, and selecting these two middle points and grabbing, I pull it a little bit below. Now it looks like an egg. I'm making it smaller and putting it aside too. I'm making another oval, and this time I want to make a mango shape. The first work I'm doing is, with direct selection I select this upper point, holding this handle, right, and pull it outside. I want to make it broad from upwards too. And this one, left, too. Selecting this point, I tilt the curve a bit, and move it a bit inside. And grabbing this point, I move it a little bit upward. Here goes your mango shape. Now obviously, it's kind of broad. If you wish you can make it thin and give you from here. But try to create an ideal shape of the mango. And, remember one thing. We're not creating any detailed graphics. It's just a start. Today's our second class. Keep it light. Gradually we'll create many things. I am creating another shape. This time in the form of an oval. Utilizing the anchor point tool within the pen tool, I delicately click and drag to form a new point. The result is a peculiar and crumpled leaf shape, which I then rotate to my liking. Placing it in its desired location, I proceed to use the direct selection tool to further manipulate the basic shapes and bring them to life. As I continue, I remind my audience that the creations I am making are cartoonish and not meant to be realistic. I am creating these designs specifically for beginners and those just starting out. I meticulously crafted a mango, an egg, and a box, each one unique and intricate. But I must remind you, dear friends, that practice is key. If you are new to this endeavor and have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I will do my utmost to provide you with the support and guidance you need to succeed. And I must express my gratitude for the wonderful response I have received with over 14 subscribers now. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Goodbye for now.